All right, YouTube, it's me, David Harry, your favorite YouTuber and vlogger. So in this video, what I'm going to do is jump straight into an example here, showing you two sets of recordings recorded with a GoPro Hero 11 Black. One set is 8-bit, the other set is 10-bit. Now on the screen, you're going to see numbers 1 and 2. 1 is going to be either 8-bit or 10-bit, and then 2 is going to be the other. I will let you know that once the sequence is finished. Now I'm going to mix those about a little bit, so 1 and 2 are not always going to be on the same side of the screen from one shot to the next and stuff like that now also what i've done is done a split screen between them and then i have done a blown in version of that split screen as well anyway so watch this and i will explain what's gone on afterwards Okay, so anytime you've seen number one on the screen, either on its own or as part of a split screen, that was the 10 bit recording. So obviously, anytime you've seen number two, either on its own or during the split screen, that was the 8 bit recording. Now, just to stop people from going around in circles on this one, I'll tell you right now, there is absolutely no difference whatsoever with regard the amount of color shades being shown on the screen at the same time between 10 bit and 8-bit in this particular example. Now when I say this particular example, I'll explain about that in a second as I move forward through this video, but just a couple of things to like take on board initially. The upload for this video was done at 10 bits with a 420 chroma subsampling. So that basically matches the best that the GoPro Hero 11 Black does, which is 10 bits, and unfortunately with only a 420 chroma subsampling, which I'll briefly touch upon as well during this video. So basically, let me just quickly try and explain to you how 10 bit and 8 bit work. So let's pretend we've got a color range which fits in this space here, right? And let's say that that is 10 bit, okay? So so let's just call that a billion colors. Now let's just say we have the exact same space, but that is 8-bit and that's got 16 million colors, right? We'll just round these figures to make it simpler. Right, well here's the thing, see this space here that I'm talking about? The space is the exact same space regardless of whether it's 8-bit or 10-bit. The only difference is, is that with 10-bit, you get more unique shades of various colors within inside that space compared to 8-bit. Okay. Okay, so the reason why you see absolutely no difference as far as the amount of color shades being represented on the screen at any one time is concerned between 8-bit and 10-bit within this particular scenario is because YouTube plays back in 8-bit 420 with regard its standard dynamic range recording. So basically, 
Anything that was 10-bit being uploaded, regardless of its chroma subsampling, will just be downgraded to 8-bit with a 420 chroma subsampling anyway. Or is another way to try and visualize this. Let's just say we have got a litre glass full of water, and next to it we have got a half-litre glass which is empty. We take the litre glass of water and tip that litre of water into the half-litre glass. Now what's going to happen is we're going to have a big mess on the table because half a litre of water is all over the table but the half litre glass is now full of water now once we do that transfer and what's going to happen is we have still got a glass of water it's just got half of the water in it so basically if you can kind of imagine that as being the difference between 10 bit and 8 bit so basically we're trying to fit 10 bits into 8 bits which won't work because we've only got an 8 bit container so what's going to have to happen happen there is a bunch of information is going to have to be spilled over the edges all over the table now also there is a problem with the hero 11 and its 10-bit format its 10-bit format is only using a chroma subsampling of 420 so basically what we've got there is like yes we have got a representation of a lot more color shades in the actual recording but the problem is the color accuracy to start off with just isn't that good now for playback it's all okay but the problem is is that when you go into like editing and stuff like that if your idea is to like push and pull these like you know files off a of hero 11 you're still going to be quite limited even though it is 10 bit and it's simply because the chroma information isn't in there so let me just give you a quick overview of what color chroma subsampling is Basically, chroma subsampling is just a way for us to reduce the chromatic information within a video signal so that it can fit with inside a lower bandwidth. Whether that's for actually transmitting the data or for storing the data, it's the same thing. It's just a way for us to represent the colors with less fidelity and save on space. So basically, 420 and 422 are both forms of chroma subsampling. 444 is actually uncompressed color information. Now, what happens with 420 and 422? We basically get rid of, like, you know, some of the fidelity within the chrominance channels. And the reason why is because basically our, our human eyeballs are not particularly that good with particular colors and stuff like that. So we can actually be fooled into believing even that there's actually still a larger color range available than what there really is. So chroma subsampling actually plays to our disadvantages with our puny ocular system and stuff like that whilst at the same time reducing the bandwidth necessary to store that video information now chroma subsampling is entirely necessary for certain things like video streaming and such and also the storing of video data so the thing is things like youtube for instance couldn't possibly work or couldn't possibly have worked when it started off if it didn't use chroma subsampling and stuff to represent the chrominance information with inside the video signal another thing to bear in mind with chroma subsampling is that your lumen information with inside the video signal is full and basically the lumen information or luminance that's basically going to give you like your definition and stuff like that within a signal so most of what we see as humans with our puny ocular system as i've just mentioned is based on like the level of light and stuff like that and that's how we basically see resolution and definition color is just like a filler as it were to give us the color information so basically chroma subsampling is just a way for us to reduce like say the fidelity of the color whilst trying to maintain something that we can actually see and look at it as being colorful and following on from that let me just try and give you a very simplistic way to explain and to maybe understand what bit depth and chroma subsampling mean in the global scheme of things if we look at chroma subsampling as our chroma fidelity as in the more accuracy that we get with a particular set of colors and then if we look at the bit depth as like our way to increase the amount of shades of that accuracy 
that's basically the way to look at the bit depth and the chroma subsampling which is inherent within a video signal now with those basic overviews and explanations there let me just go back to the hero 11 and let me explain some fundamental problems that it's got now the thing with 10-bit 420 that is absolutely fine for end user delivery and especially obviously if you're using a 10-bit panel to play back on and don't forget here in order for you to see the advantages of 10-bit you do have to be playing back on a 10-bit tv or monitor or device of any description with the screen on it and unfortunately the vast majority of people out there viewing content are viewing on 8-bit panels so you're going to miss that information anyway if you're not viewing on 10-bit but nonetheless 10-bit 420 is absolutely fine for the end user delivery format what it is not so good for is for anything to do with post-production but here's the problem though with the hero 10 not just that the chroma subsampling doesn't lend itself at all well to be like pushed and pulled in post-production but the sensor on the hero 10 just is not good enough to resolve the type of color information and resolution that you would be expecting from a proper camera let me just briefly explain this when the hero 11 is even like filming something which has got like great light and stuff like that the picture down at like the sub pixel level is noisy okay now the problem with that noise it in effect acts like dithering so this is one of the other reasons why you may not notice any difference between 10 and 8 bit from a hero 11 is because effectively the picture is being like as it were naturally dithered because of the noise within the sensor now that is actually a bit of a problem when it comes to trying to define the, the like the variances within color shades that are going on now for anybody who doesn't know what dithering is i'll just give a very basic overview of that dithering is basically a noise pattern applied to a video signal which basically can help you to go from say 10 bit down to 8 bit and reduce the color banding that you would normally see during that process and how it does that is what happens is it'll use like this like this noise pattern within the picture and that noise pattern is very very tiny it's not like big blocks of noise or anything it's really really very small like fine grain noise and so what happens there because the noise pattern is constantly making the color move slightly there's no actual fixed kind of band of color at any one time because of the noise pattern so basically what it's doing is helping to mask the differences between the stuff that you can't see to the stuff that you can see so effectively when you apply dithering to a video signal you are actually destroying the video signal no matter how you look at it it might well help you but it's definitely destroying the signal now much in the same effect of dithering done to a video signal that is exactly what the sensor does on a gopro it just isn't good enough to actually be recording really solid clean signals you may think when you look at the picture it looks great and it it does gopros look amazing for what they are but you definitely can't put up a gopro against a proper high-end professional video camera used for film and say something by red or something like that or a very high-end sony or whatever you can't compare the two because what will happen on a very high-end camera you are going to get a lot less noise on the sensor for your color information and stuff like that so once again bear that in mind the noisy sensor that is inherent within a Hero 11 is also going to be adversely affecting the color anyways. Which basically means, once again, that 8-bit and 10-bit look the same, even played back on a 10-bit system. Because my monitoring is done in 10-bit, and I've got to be honest, I don't see any difference between 8-bit and 10-bit from the GoPro. And that is because of that inherent problem to do with noise in the video signal in the first place, which acts like dithering okay so i'm going to start summing up now so is 10-bit 420 of any use for anyone absolutely yeah it is a great deliverable format for all those reasons why i've just mentioned however it will have to have been sourced from something that was at least 10 bit or a higher bit depth and also preferably done with like a minimum of a 422 chroma subsampling in the first instance so as far as delivery is concerned it's absolutely fine now is it worth going 10 bit and 422 for post-production work 
Well, I would say that is your minimum requirement. If you are going to be doing anything like pushing and pulling the pitcher drastically, or not even drastically, but doing apply, you know, or applying grades and stuff like that, absolutely a minimum of 10 bit 422. But depending upon like what your outputs are gonna be for, you know, it could be for cinema and stuff like that, or it could be for certain other types of graphical use as well to do with computers, you may well be looking at like you have to go 444 to start off with and then also maybe start looking like you know 10 bit plus and stuff like that so yeah absolutely there's a time and a place for all of these things however when it comes to a camera which by all accounts from a lot of these influencer type youtubers is basically the second coming of christ or something you've got to just switch off and stop listening to all that nonsense the thing is a lot of these youtubers who went out of their ways to say this video isn't sponsored, but yet they were given a GoPro Hero 11 a month in advance of its release by GoPro and were working very closely with the marketing teams at GoPro. Can you really believe that these people have not got something going on there, which is just a way for them to try and generate more sales for GoPro with this camera? Again, I'm not saying the camera's bad, it isn't. I love GoPros, I've used them since the Hero 3 and all that. But don't be listening to all this BS that's going on about how great the GoPro is because it's 10 bit for all of those reasons that I've just explained to you. And most certainly, don't be listening to the types of people who were doing comparisons between the Action 3 in 8-bit and the Hero 11 in 10-bit, such as David Manning. I mean, that guy really needs to be removed from YouTube for spreading so much misinformation due to his own ineptness and lack of understanding of these things. Because basically, if you take an Action 3 and in 8-bit and put it up against the Hero 11 in 10-bit and then start saying to people, you can quite clearly see changes there, can't you, and differences? Well, yeah, for a start, they are two different cameras, okay? The settings are all going to be different. The way that they, like, you know, resolve color information and the way they're encoding it is going to be slightly different. So there's all kinds of weird differences going on there, which is definitely going to make you go, that's right, David Manning. There's a difference in that picture. I can see it. Well, no, that difference has got nothing to do with 8-bit and 10-bit. So the likes of David Manning and all those other YouTubers who've been happily bleating on about it's just better, right? Go back and ask these people to explain why it's better and ask them to explain that why when you fit 10-bit into an 8-bit space without any dithering being applied, why does it still look like 10-bit to you? Okay, anyways, I'll cut myself off there because I can feel myself going deep into a rant which will involve many expletives and I don't really want to turn this video into one of those. Anyways, I had a quick look at my little note things here. Say notes, they were just bullet points to remind me to stay on track with what I was trying to talk about. I think I've covered everything there. Now, there are actually uh, like technical benefits to uploading to YouTube in, say, 10-bit 422, but that's more to do with graphics and things like that and text and stuff like that and at which point those things end up be getting converted to like 8-bit 420 and it's basically a case of well is that best left to YouTube or should you do it ahead of YouTube not knowing exactly what YouTube's using to do the conversion it's a bit difficult to tell that one but nonetheless yes 10-bit and like you know 422 and stuff like that can be of benefit even though all the information is going to get ripped out of it and thrown all over the floor by YouTube anyways I will do more videos about that type of stuff if anybody's interested I'll also do a bit more of an in-depth on chroma subsampling and maybe do something where I've used some like diagrams and things like that to explain bit depth and stuff like that. In fact, also following this video and as I've already said, there's going to be something else that I've done where I've generated a like a 10 bit 422 image and converted to 8 bit and whatnot within DaVinci Resolve and things. So that might give you a better understanding on the screen visually of what's going on. And also on top of that as well, I'll do a few more things as well, kind of like 
digging a bit deeper into some of these things and like over explaining stuff that doesn't need over explaining anyways if you found the video useful insightful entertaining in any way please do give it a thumbs up also consider subscribing to my channel and getting all over that bell notification icon like it's going out of fashion in order to be notified of similar videos to this one in the future i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now